Welcome back to the channel. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and share with those who may also have an interest. It really helps us get noticed on the, uh, on, on the algorithms, I guess is what they're saying. And I have noticed that when you get a little interaction, it does boost things in the analytics. So that would be greatly appreciated. What we're going to look at today is an I understand it's a 1966 Pug UTV. These were manufactured by Bruce Industries back in the 60s and 70s. This particular one has an interesting story. This UTV was underwater twice in 2005. Once with Hurricane Katrina and once with Hurricane Rita. There's quite a story to this to this piece of equipment. I spent some time on the Gulf Coast after hurricanes, uh, Katrina and Rita, but most of the damage is done by Katrina. This was part of a fleet that a farm, a horse farm had, and the guy who was in charge of maintaining and keeping everything maintained, his name was Mr. Vincent. So we call this unit in our family we call it the mv it is a little quirky but it works really hard this thing is tough it hauls a lot it will haul something on the order of 1500 pounds in the in the dump box and it'll also pull a trailer um we'll look at that in a second but uh mr vincent this this piece of equipment the reason we call it the mv is Mr. Vincent was the patriarch of the family that allowed me to have this piece of equipment. He really, he truly just gave it to me. It was underwater once. He changed the engine oil and the gas, got it to start, and then Rita hit and put it underwater again, and he just kind of threw up his hands at this, this piece because he had a bunch of other stuff he was working on, tractors, lawnmowers, that type of thing. But that man was always working. Uh, later, during the recovery effort down there, I was actually staying on their property, and I always, like, looked at this thing with, like, this thing is really cool. I didn't exactly know what it was, but I know it looked cool. I knew it would haul firewood, and it just seemed like a really tough little, tough little beast. So, Mr. Vincent was similar to this. He was up every morning, out weed-eating or mowing or cleaning up debris or raking the little beach area that the family owned on this little river. This was down in Kiln, Mississippi. Uh, it's like uh, 12, 13 miles north of the, of the Gulf Coast, but it was right on the Jordan River, which dumped into the Bay of St. Louis, or yeah, the Bay of St. Louis. Uh, so there was a lot of debris to clean up, a lot of, a lot of work to be done. And Mr. Vincent was out there all the time working with his, he had a Massey Ferguson two-wheel drive tractor that he would clean up debris with. So he was constantly working. So let's take a little bit of a look on, at this piece of equipment. There is not a lot of space in here. This was not made for somebody who's 6'1". Um, you know, it's not made for big people. 
and you have very limited knee space. Now I suppose if you got the correct seat, because I think these look like boat seats to me, not appropriate because it was underwater, and there are the seats that were on it when I brought it home. But maybe if you had a different style of seat, you could sit back just a smidge if they weren't so foam covered or, or whatever. But I hit my knee on the dash. And I prefer to drive, well, I can drive from the driver's side. It's my preference to, to operate the vehicle from the passenger seat. The gas pedal's easier for my left foot to hit there, and the brake pedal which also needs some attention. If you can see, it just has a piece of aluminum angle. I've used this thing on and off, you know, mostly for gathering firewood. I've hauled some dirt with it if we were doing any work on our uh, parking area for our wood, wood processing area. I would haul some dirt out if I was going to move some stone in. And I've done a lot, but it needs some, it needs some work. It needs that, the brake pedal fixed. I would like to possibly extend this platform and that would mean having to extend the power steering lines the electrical work and the let me think it'd be the brakes so you have power steering i think there's a uh, feed and return and then there's the brake line i believe is this is the one closer also the steering push rod would need and that's the one that's moving that would need to be extended i've had an ongoing problem with the throttle cable it's constantly breaking it's a poor setup i don't know who if it was a homemade job or if it was part from the factory but it, they use one of those solid wire choke cables and you can see it right there and those are not made for repetitive use on and off the throttle. But suffice it to say, I don't know if this is the way it's supposed to be. This is the way it's been. Um, I've replaced it once and I put it back the way it was, but I have since bought a, an automotive JEGS throttle cable, and we're going to be installing that and coming up with a way to make this thing work. That spring sometimes will come unhooked from the cable or if you want to call it a cable the wire I guess more appropriately and that's kind of a pain the other issue is the power steering pump I don't know if you can tell but it is canted uh, it would be towards the bottom of the frame the right side of the pulley is towards the bottom edge of the frame if I bring it up maybe like that you could see a little better and that's because one of the ears on the body of the power steering pump that has the threads in it are broke. And only one ear is holding the uh, pump in place. So you can't get a lot of tension on it. So the power steering is pretty weak. It works, but it's pretty weak. The hydraulic dump box uh, doesn't go up very well. I've looked to see if I could find something similar to this. And maybe if you know what model this thing is from. I mean, it's got to be from something in the 60s or 70s. Maybe, I don't know if this is a retrofit to this, but I need to come up with a fix for this, get that so it's tight. The other thing is, is this steering, um, this is an articulated steering mechanism, and this has got, I don't know if you can look down, just below that bolt head. There, I don't think there should be that much slop. And this is the way it was when I got it. But I don't think it's supposed to be that way. So that needs tightened up. The other thing that needs to be done on the dump box itself, there are, looks like it's been patched before. There's pinholes in here. And honestly, for hauling firewood, it's not a big deal. But I think I would kind of like to put a new bottom in this dump box. When I brought this back, in 2005 I put a new I wanted a receiver it did not have a hitch receiver and I wanted one of those so I put a plate in the back and welded in the uh, a receiver mount and 
I also have a place for lights and I never got around to wiring those. So those are the things that need to be fixed. So my father-in-law gave me a, a the, I don't know if it's a sales brochure, but he gave it to me back in, oh, 10 years ago for Christmas. I've tried to find one again and I haven't been able to. That's the front cover, introducing 1970. But I believe in looking at the front end and the style, this may have been a prototype, but I was under the impression it was a 1966 and there's nobody around to ask what it is. Maybe somebody out there knows or knows somebody that knows. If you do, feel free to direct them to this channel. But I always thought there's some really cool things in this catalog or brochure. So they actually came with the front wheel drive, but it was very easy to convert them to four wheel. And they sold a kit and I think they're, I can read it there, it says you can change it in 20 minutes. And it talks about the plug, all the, all the great things that it does. And there's some of the action shots of the articulated uh, independent, uh, pivotal, I think it pivots, I guess that's the proper term. But the pug does just about everything according to this brochure. And there it shows pulling trailers. It says it adds a thousand pounds payload as a person carrier or load. They add snow blades for it. Pull that into shade. Make it a little easier to see. They have a manual dump box. You can have a cab for it. All kinds of cool stuff. Half ton, so it has a thousand pounds capacity. I don't know, I've had 1500 in it without a problem. And they made a bunch of ag equipment for it golf course equipment. You can see they had all kinds of cool stuff. It's, they call that a leaf rake, I guess. Seems like more of a small hay rake, maybe. Had a rototiller. So this dump box, this manual dump box, I think was also able to be used as a gondola, like to haul people. And they had a camper, they had a wheelless camper, I think that's that guy, like a slide-in. Then they had the wheeled camper, some kind of tele telephone pole setter or something like that. Trailers, the snowblade again, again the broom. So I guess these had a 12 horse Tecumseh factory, and if you notice, they had a Kohler in it. That's the second Kohler I put that in about two years ago. I had a spare motor that came out of a Cub Cadet mower, and it was almost identical. The only difference is, is the output shaft. Uh, it was either one inch to inch and a sixteenth or inch and a sixteenth down to one inch. I, I can't remember exactly what the whole story was on that. I had somebody actually make the change for me. Um, I didn't do that myself. I had somebody that was able to do it. They had time. I didn't and they were able to take care of it. Okay, I'm going to do a quick demonstration on the dump box and it's going to be pretty jerky and jittery but just to show how it works and we'll go we'll go from there it is make sure this guy's in neutral because it will start in gear i don't think they were big on safety interfaces back then so we'll start it up um this is the way the the this is actually lower and this is raise on the dump box i probably ought to turn that valve around because it doesn't seem intuitive to me
also another neat feature about this is uh, it has a removable tailgate. The tailgate will tilt down, it has pins, and it can also tilt up, uh, lift up from the bottom. And I suppose if you were super talented and your hydraulic pump worked properly, you'd be able to actually tailgate gravel with this thing. Possibly. It really is a neat unit. I hope you enjoyed taking a peek at this thing today. And if you like content like this, please feel free to share it with your friends. Share it with those who may have interest. Like and subscribe.